Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. This is not a complaint video. It's just a Vault exclusive. But there's a couple of things I got to mention that I think I should talk about. And uh, I hope it's enough to make a video out of, but we'll see. If you don't see this video, you'll know it was too short. <laughs> Lately, it's been a problem on YouTube. I even shot a video about it, but not enough people saw the video. And it's really, really easy to go onto YouTube and create a profile and claim to be anybody you want to be. And so what happens right now is five or ten times a day, someone goes onto YouTube and starts a channel using my logos. And they'll actually call their channel uh, Pinned by Steve Leto, uh, Steve Leto Prize, uh, Steve Leto Contest, uh, Leto's Law Prize, Pinned by Leto's Law. And they just, they just steal all the uh, material off my channel homepage and create their own page. And then they go onto my videos and they comment to video saying, you've won a prize, contact me. You've won a prize, contact me. And they want you to contact them through their page, not me through my page. But most of my viewers, I'm hoping, because I get quite a few questions about this, say, hey, Steve, I got a thing. Is that you? And no, it's not me. If it was me, it would say Steve Leto with my logo and it would just say Steve Leto. Although apparently people have been doing that also. So YouTube's got a place that you can complain about people. If you look next to the person's name, there's three dots. You click on it and then you can complain about them. So I go in and I block them and then I complain about them. And if you complain about somebody who is you know, being an imposter, they, they, are, they are impersonating you. YouTube will take them down, but they can create these things just as fast as YouTube can take them down. And so it's a bit of an annoyance because I got to go in a couple times a day just to clear these bots out. And what I don't understand, and, and quite often I come on here and I talk about issues and situations and go, I don't know how they can fix this. I know how they can fix this. this there's such a simple fix for this that I don't understand why they're not doing it at YouTube. I used to run a bulletin board for guys who had metal detectors years ago. I had tens of thousands of members. It was insanely popular. And I had a discussion board on the website where you could go and post stuff and different topics and so on. And if the board ever got attacked by bots, which happened back then, you could go in and turn on a thing called flood control. And flood control would limit people to commenting only once per minute or once every two minutes, and you could set it. And so if I started getting hit with bots, I would turn the flood control on and go, you can only comment once every three minutes. And the bots will go away because these bots are posting stuff literally 20, 30 comments a minute. Just boom, 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 and they're the exact same comments. And so you could actually set it to say, you can only comment once every minute or so, or you can only post one comment one time. You can't keep posting the same comment over and over again. Now, I will tell you that in the eight years of been doing this channel, I can only think of one example where one person who's a real person came in and posted the exact same comment over and over again. And it was a video I did about steam cars. I'm not making this up. <laughs> the video I did about the white Chevelle with a steam engine in it. And uh, a guy who was upset that I had suggested that the car was interesting said it's not interesting because steam technology is so bad because, and he starts talking about the different cycles and so on. And he posted the exact same comment to every single comment on the page. It's annoying. I don't know why you do that. Um, I, I think some of those people are mentally ill, but I don't want to get off in the complaints here. I simply want to point out that YouTube could install flood control and say, if you're a creator and you put up a video, I've already got the ability to turn the comments off. I can turn the comments off, okay? If I've got that ability, why not give me the ability to throttle the comments and just simply say, you can post comments every two minutes. And if you really have something important to say and you couldn't fit it in your first comment, you can wait two minutes to post your next comment. It's not rocket science. This is simple. And so I, I, I suspect somebody's going to weigh in on this video and say, here's Steve why they're not doing it. And it might just be, that by letting bots put up comments, it somehow makes the traffic on YouTube look larger? I don't know. I can't imagine that that's actually that valuable, though. And it's such an annoyance for creators. So I did a video about it. Rick Beato, one of my heroes on YouTube, he's a musician and a record producer. Rick Beato did a video about it also. And he's got people working for him who just sit there, and that's one of the things they got to do is go through and knock this stuff off, take it down. And everybody I know who has a YouTube channel with any amount of subscribers 
is dealing right now with the imposter bots. And it could be so easily fixed by simply putting in flood control or whatever they want to call it, where you can just simply say, instead of turning the comments off entirely, you're limiting the average person to one comment every five minutes. And most people would say, I only post one comment. Oh, guess what then? It doesn't affect any real people. It'll only affect the bots. If it only affects the bots, who cares? No one cares. So there you go. Second of all, I got to tell you, there's a weird concept that I've been aware of for a while. But I may have mentioned a story about this previously. But every now and then, I will get a notice from YouTube that says, Hey, Steve, one of your videos has popped up on someone else's channel. Meaning that they saw your video, they downloaded your video, and they uploaded it to their channel. Now, the weird thing is, and I, I don't think I'm telling you anything you don't know here, there are ads on my channels. My channels are monetized. So I get advertising money from the ads on my channels. And it, it's, it's, but it adds up. So if somebody takes my video and just simply puts it on their channel, we can talk all we want about the intellectual honesty of that. But the other thing, of course, is that if you watch it on their channel, they make money from it, but I don't. And number two, I put the time and effort into making these videos and someone else goes, oh, I like that video. I'm going to take it, put it on my channel. And so the weird thing is that YouTube's filters, when you put up a, a video, it scans the video, runs it through all kinds of different algorithms and stuff, and it looks for things, including, is this video already on YouTube? And so I've gotten notices before it says somebody's using a portion of one of your videos. And I'll go and look, and, and, and YouTube will actually tell you whether it's 10%, 50%, or 100% of the video. But the th interesting thing here is that there's a concept called mirroring a video. And, and I've seen this in different communities where people are concerned that if they put a video up and it gets taken down, that no one will see it. So they'll actually tell their friends, I want you to mirror this video. So that it's up in several different places. So if someone tries to get it taken down, it's harder to get it taken down. But that's when you're trying to make sure that it doesn't get taken down completely. When I put my videos up onto YouTube, my videos are not objectionable or offensive. And my videos are always fine. And so my videos don't get taken down by anyone but me. And by the way, I do take down videos. People know this. I take them down from time to time. They don't do that well. And then they wind up on a channel I've got called The Vault. <laughs> Somewhere down the road. When they have more uh, of that sentimental value. But um, I will have about once a month, I get a notice from YouTube that says somebody just uploaded one of your videos in its entirety, 100% of your video, on their channel. Now, YouTube says, do you want us to do anything about it? Because YouTube wants to take care of the creators who create the content for YouTube. And so I have choices. And one of the choices is simply to say, yeah, ask them to take it down. And so YouTube sends them a note and says, hey, the guy who actually made that video wants you to take it down. And if they take it down, nothing bad happens. If they don't take it down, and it turns out that it was copyrighted by me, uh, then they've got a problem. But the interesting thing is that in the entire time I've been on YouTube, uh, I've probably had it happen whew, 20 times, 30 times. And I'm talking about going back eight years, but it's happened more and more recently because my channel's gotten more attention. And so... About, I don't know, a few months ago, I had a guy take one of my videos and upload it in its entirety in its entirety to his channel. Whole thing. And YouTube said, would you like us to have him take it down? I said, yeah, have him take it down. And a little while later, I got a note saying it's been taken down. Then I got an angry email from the guy who said, Steve, because of you, my channel just got shut down. And I wrote him back and I go, I don't know what you're talking about. And I, I didn't even realize that he was talking about my video. And he goes, yeah. He goes, you sent a takedown notice for that video of yours. And as a result, YouTube closed my channel. Well, YouTube won't close your channel for a single copyright strike. And if you took it down immediately, you wouldn't get a copyright strike. So the only reason YouTube would have ch closed on that guy's channel is if he'd done it so many times. They said, hey, the, all this guy's doing is stealing videos and posting them on his own channel. But um, I, I, I got one yesterday. And... They just said someone's using one of your videos in its entirety. And I went and looked, and they were. And so I said, okay, ask them to take it down. And then as I was scrolling through the comments underneath the video later, I actually saw a comment. I think it's the same guy, but I don't know for sure. 
where the guy goes, hey, I love your video. I'm going to mirror it on my channel. No, don't. <laughs> if you love my video, give it a thumbs up and watch it. That's all I ask. I don't need you to take it and put it someplace else where someone else makes money off of it, and I don't. And obviously, there's two places to see the video. Then the one I run doesn't get all the views. So I hate to sound mercenary, like all I'm here for is the views, but I do put work into this. And, and I, I get people thanking me, saying, Steve, thank you for all the hard work you put into these videos. I'm not going to claim it's heavy lifting, um, but, but I do put time and effort into these videos. So I appreciate the fact that people get that. But if people want to just simply take my video and download it and put it up on YouTube as if it's their own, obviously I can't allow that. Um, I couldn't allow that as somebody who creates something, let alone you know videos on YouTube. And finally, I'm going to mention, because I've mentioned it before, uh, but, but whenever I do it on the main channel, the reaction is always such that I got to take the video right back down again. <laughs> But I got a case of these books in the other day. So I think it's two dozen. So Drawn to Injustice is the book I wrote about the wrongful conviction of Timothy Masters. I've mentioned it before. The book came out years ago. It went out of print. He and I got it back into print with another publisher. It's uh, formatted differently. I think it's a better book. We've updated a few things in it. Uh, there's, uh, there's me and there's Timothy. And the book was written with the guy. The book is about Timothy Masters spent 10 years in prison for a murder he did not commit. If you want a copy in the United States, send me an email and just say, Steve, I want a copy of that book. I will invoice you via Square $20. That's it, 20 bucks. That includes postage. I'll sign it for you and I'll mail it to you, 20 bucks. So if you want me to sign it, put it in the note. Say, Steve, I want you to sign this to me or sign it to somebody else. And then when I send you the invoice, you pay that. It's secure like, uh, like PayPal, but it's Square is when I use. And they'll ask you for the mailing address. Uh, and then I'll get that and I'll send these off. And I said, I got a case, case and a half of them, something like that. So anybody wants a copy of Drawn to Injustice. Other books of mine, I have a few, but not a lot. But if I have other books you're interested in, let me know. If I've got one, I'll, I'll tell you what you know how much that's going to cost. And we'll do this thing via Square that way. But Drawn to Injustice, got a case, case and a half of them, 20 bucks. But it's The Wrongful Conviction of Timothy Masters. It's a great book, I think. <laughs> the topic is good. Uh, authors are always looking for good things to write about. And that was a fascinating story. And I'm glad I got a chance to work with Timothy on it. So it's uh, something I think you will enjoy, especially if you like true crime and studying how the court system works. So that's the story. Uh, this isn't a complaint video, but um, it's some form of update. I'll come up with a title for it later on, but I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.